Um, <laughs> before we even really start, um, I guess a couple of things. We have to kind of wrap it up by a quarter of six, no later than a quarter of six. We have a lot to discuss tonight. Um, we have a lot on our agenda, and I'll let Steve open the meeting. I just wanted to let you know that we had to watch the time. So. And Diane, I do have the same copy he's got, so okay. I do have the latest. All right, thanks. You can call the meeting to order and I can hand it back over to Diane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're starting off with an agency or two? Or? Um, actually, I don't see them here, but we do have our television station and they were going to present and um, tell us what is the latest on that. It's a little bit different than what we've experienced in the past. So if Chad Fillion would like to come up and oh, very take good. the seat here. You're gonna be on both ends of the oh, camera. Yeah. Front and back of the camera, yes. So. You Appreciate know you guys listening and hearing me. Yeah, for the most part, I've, usually it's on the other side of the table. We got three over here. So. Are we still calling your channel? No. No, we're going to talk about that. Granite it's North Television. Granite it's North Television. And we'll, we'll get to the, the where and the whys around that. Um, ten, three of you, and I've got more for other members. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for allowing me to present to you folks about the changes and the request that we have for Granite North Television. Um, as you know, Channel 2 has been around here in Littleton for mm -hmm. about 15 years. Um, it was founded by Bob O'Connor back along, and it was a, a hobbyist pet project that turned into a class at the high school, which has now grown beyond that scope. And myself and our board members are looking to establish the station as a hopeful go-to resource here in the North Country. Um, we have um, Burlington off in Vermont, we have Portland off to the east. We have Manchester south of us, but there's nothing for television news local to us, and we're looking over the next handful of years to help change that. Um, for a long time, it has been known as Littleton Area Television. Um, I've found documentation on Bob's videos dating back to 2000 with that moniker. Um, but the board and I had discussions about Channel 2. We, were, we received a notice from Spectrum Time Warner that our station number was going to change from the actual Channel 2, right. our namesake, to which is now 1301. So we have, we're way up in the nosebleeds now, um, and we are available in seven towns in the area. Uh, Lisbon, Sugar Hill, Bethlehem, Franconia, Littleton, Carroll, and Monroe. And we discussed about the name of Littleton Area Television and how it is not as inclusive as one would think. Because the word on the street in talking with viewers was, oh, that's a Littleton station. That's a Littleton station. So we decided that it might be best to rename ourselves because we had a channel change that was going to be happening. We couldn't lean on Channel 2 anymore because we were no longer on Channel 2. So we decided to actually make um, Heather, pass that down. Thank you. Sure, Karen, on for you as well. Hello. Uh, we decided to move from the Littleton area television to something more inclusive, hence we landed on Granite North Television. Uh, it didn't single out a single community, but it showed us as a North Country collective. But also part of our vision with our nonprofit is to expand upwards into Graft uh, to um, Coas County. And if we said North Country, the folks in the Great North Woods would not associate with us because we're not that. You know, just part of that. You know, people in Colbrook don't consider themselves North Country. They don't. That's, well, I mean, they are the North Country, but from what I'm talking, a lot of people have said they're more the, the North, north Great North, north Woods. Or, north of the yeah. North Country. Um, okay. So yeah, yeah, North of the North, <laughs> the the real nosebleed. So. Um, we, we put together a board. We have a seven member board that does uh, consist of people from the region. Um, Jason Torres, who lives in Sugar Hill, Rebecca Brown from Bethlehem, Eric Meth, a uh, Franconian Select Board member, Justin Roshak, who's also in Franconia, Andrew Bronson from Lisbon, he's from Tender 4, he does the Tender 5K each year, uh, Nate Reed, who is at the high school teaching the broadcasting class. Um, Adam Rizek, who hosts a music festival here in the region from Littleton, and then John Adams is a parent of the 
Drama Club and worked closely with the uh, Littleton Parks and Rec for their summer drama program. He's also part of our board. And who's that high school? Uh, Nathan Reed. He is covering the broadcast position over there now. Okay, and, it, and that program in the high school is somehow tied in with what you It is. It still exists. Um, the Originally, the program started um, as a class that Bob O'Connor started, and then it eventually rolled into the CTC um, Korean Tech Education Program that they have there through the CTC Center. Um, and it uh, receives students from area schools um, as far as uh, Groveton and Lisbon. And it's a strong program that they have over there. And we work with them as often as we can. Recently, we tried to have them help us out with the Veterans Day program that was at the high school. So they had some students cover that. Um, and the hope is that Nathan is trying to work into his program a um, part of one of the I don't know, assignments or tests or something that he's looking to do as part of his curriculum is that they need to film select board meetings or public access meetings because of the broadcasting component with the class. And they would have, I mean, if they did some various projects or created a film, they have the ability to show it. They on do. Your we have um, we have a handful of them that are up on our YouTube page. Mm -hmm. um, we have over four hundred. Or over 500 videos up on our YouTube page now, I believe it is. Um, and they date back as far as 99, 2000. But a, a lot of them are actual high school production stuff that they've done and put together. And Nate knows that whenever he has something that he wants to showcase, um, he needs just contact me and we'll put it up on the station. Um, and then there's discussion Nate and I have had about um, helping that class with uh, access to our station to help building the schedule and learning part of the program component. Um, that goes with this. Um, on this, you can see our, our mission. Um, I would like to read it verbatim because we've spent some time putting it together. Um, and it does really kind of talk a little bit about our growth and our mission here. Uh, Granite North Television's mission is to provide high quality, community based distribution of local and regional news, events, programs, and information that is commercial free and free of charge. Using over-the-air, online, or printed distribution formats, we ensure universal access to content that informs, educates, enlightens, and enriches the public, and helps to foster the civil discourse essential to American society. And that really leads into our greater mission of bringing more hyperlocal news to the citizens. Um, the newspapers are great. They do a great job at reporting the news. Um, but there's, there's something about the, the payment process that not every citizen can grab a hold of. Um, it, it's, it can be expensive. And if we can provide a free news source to the citizens that is available on YouTube or on their television cable, then we would like to look to do that. Did you have question? Or? No, no, oh, okay. I, no, not yet. <laughs> okay, no, certainly. Yeah. So, and we are part of Littleton, the town of Littleton is part of the Profile Cable Consortium. It is a intermunicipal agreement. Um, the seven towns adopted that municipal agreement in 2002. It was Littleton, Lisbon, Bethlehem, Monroe, Franconia, Sugar Hill, and Carroll, and it is known as the Profile Cable Consortium. And that agreement enables those seven towns to enter into a single agreement with then Adelphia, and then eventually Time Warner, and now Spectrum. And that cable franchise agreement is the agreement that regulates the um, households per mile before broadband build-out begins, the cost per linear foot for a cable after a certain install footage. For example, if you have a house that's 150 feet off of the road, they may charge you extra to get cable to your house because it's beyond the 125 foot. And that's just an example. Um, I don't have the documents in front of me to cite the actual Littleton's costs. But yes. So what is the status of that contract? That contract is currently in negotiations. We are working with... Um, DTC. Yeah, DTC. Thank you, Andrew. Um, the Donahue Tucker out of Exeter and Portsmouth Region. We did uh, engage them. They, we have a signed letter of agreement with them. That we're in the negotiation process. It is slow <laughs> because it's a usually, she said at the outset, once we have the signed document, it could be anywhere between 12 and 24 months before it all works our way through. But it is currently under um, 
negotiation. We're working with the surveys now, uh, the Profile Cable Consortium. Um, they started with Littleton because it is the largest of the hub, and then they'll work from that to the other six towns. But um, it mm -hmm. is ongoing. But we used to have a committee, are they? No, the committee no still exists. Active? Yep, it, it still exists. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew Ed, um, and the, the team over at the office had elected myself to fill in for Eddie Moore mm -hmm. um, as an alternate. But we have an active board. I was actually in Bethlehem last night and brought up to them that we haven't seen them at the table for a handful of months, and we would love to see their commitment and their. Uh, it, have them engage in the process because if we have quorum at the table, votes would pass that may or may not affect their town in a positive or negative light based on their opinion. So then having a voice at the table is, is beneficial. But they get revenue from it, right? Um, well, that's why we're here tonight. There is a handful that do have revenue that come in, but not all of them. Um, some of the towns don't levy any tax at all. Some, uh, like Littleton, levy a 3% tax. Fee. A fee. A fee, yes, a fee, as a, as yes. Opposed to property it is a tax. franchise fee. It is a franchise fee. It is not levy. That's that was my mistake. So that's in the cable bill. Correct. Um, okay. Users that subscribe to cable services do see a franchise fee on their line. Um, it is deceiving the way the cable companies present it, in that it looks like it's an added fee from the town, but through there's been a handful of. Um, votes passed through the years of allowing them to have transparency on how those fees are assessed instead of a lump sum uh, at the end of the year they can put it on each subscriber and it says that this is the portion that's paid to a franchise fee and the way it looks it says that the citizen is paying that fee and then sometimes they're like well why is this why is the town doing this it's actually required by if the town asks it's required by the cable company to levy that fee and then they recoup those on a yearly basis through the subscribers um, but it's it, 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 it's interesting the way that they put it out there I'll just leave it at that but uh, each each town can elect to do up to five percent um, on those fees um, some do not at all and others do one percent um, I believe Lisbon has a one percent um, Sugar Hill has 1%, Carroll has a 3%, we have a 3%. Uh, some of them collect it and they, it goes right to the general fund. Others, um, it, it offsets specific items. Um, but the, the hope and the intent of the agreement um, when it was um, enacted by the Cable Act back in 84 is it was a, a subsidy for public access television. And the hope was that these fees were going to offset and assist with the growth of public television stations. Um, and those fees, they, they land into the fund and they have offset on many ways what is needed for the towns. But I'm here to hopefully ask for the town to like, look at the, the line item as it exists and coming in now and shift a portion of those funds to fund the station. It's a, it would be, um, using those funds to offset the, the capital costs for equipment to keep the station up and running. Um, currently, the equipment that we have is either borrowed or not in existence. Um, the, the microphones that you see are used by the station. Some of them are borrowed from the high school. The camera that's being used now is borrowed from the high school. Um, there is minimal equipment that is utilized that actually is owned by the station. But if you subscribe to cable, you're going to pay this fee even if you don't watch Correct. Channel 2. Correct. And then if we put it in the tax base, you're going to pay it twice even if you don't use the station. Right. And there, there is the discussion of if, well, if it's paid twice, yeah. then, then that money that comes in would offset the tax base and therefore offset that fee. So you're not necessarily paying it twice because it would lower the tax rate. But the, the amount that we're talking about is, is, is pennies on a thousand. It's like 40 grand a year. That it comes going to the station, which something. None of it watch. comes to the station now. I do believe, and correct no, me if I'm wrong, some of it is offsetting the cost to operate the station at right. this time, mm -hmm. but it's not covering any of the capital expenses that we right. are faced against. I guess my confusion, I'm mm -hmm. really confused about this. So it is very confusing. It took me a year and a half to really wrap my head around it. Mm -hmm. So. 
part of my question is that we do have revenue coming in. That's correct. And so I, I kind of need to understand where that yeah. revenue goes. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, if we have it going into the school to assist in the program, and then we have it going into the television station, so to speak, who will own that piece of equipment? Okay. Um, I'm really double sensitive about who takes ownership of the equipment and how we sometimes lose equipment mm -hmm. because of some understanding that no one ever really understood. <laughs> so, no, and there has been a lot of that, and part so, of our efforts over the last uh, year and a half is the, the untangling of the school and the station. Uh, for many years, because it started as a, a hobbyist project through Bob O'Connor, the, the scope was not of where we're looking at now. So as it grew, they found solutions that worked at the time, but that created this web of entanglement. And then when the CTC Center was built, more equipment arrived, but those, a lot of that equipment was purchased through Perkins Grant, um, and it was not the um, franchise fee. Um, the hope is, is that now that Granite North Television is a state-recognized nonprofit agency, uh, we are looking to get our nonprofit status in 2019, so we'd be a 501c3. The hope is that Granite North Television would take ownership and control of any new equipment that's purchased. Um, the station would exist autonomous under the moniker Granite North Television, but we would exist as a community location that would be accessible by citizens and the school. So the school could utilize the equipment that's used there. Um, right now we don't have any, we're borrowing from them, but we would like to replace that and give them theirs that is needed. And then as we develop and have more news and information services, it gives them an outlet for their educational opportunities. So some of your resources definitely are through the franchise, through that 3%. And also through advertising, correct? Um, we, we get a minimal amount of advertising right now, yeah. So, so when this grows, if it grows, is this going to become another department for the town? Because you will need mm -hmm. employees to run the station. Right. So how is that going to go? So um, part of what he's saying is like when Channel, when, when channel 2 um, needed somebody to step up, uh, one of the things that we looked at is who is Channel 2? And so we looked at the uh, Secretary of State's office. There was no organization. There's no such thing as Channel 2 registered with Secretary of State as an organization, as a nonprofit or for profit or whatever. And so uh, what Chad's been doing is with the, he's cre he ha has a board, Grant North TV board now, and ha has filed with the Secretary of State, I believe, mm -hmm. as an organization, yep. and they're pending their 501c3 status. So they're an independent third party you know, not affiliated with the town beyond the fact that uh, the only the only group that's legally allowed to collect that franchise fee from the cable companies, I believe, is just the town. You can't collect it. Well, and I brought it's, that up to our um, Catherine Miller, our attorney, and I asked during uh, when we renegotiate, can Granite North Television as an entity be the namesake for the recipient? And she says, if the profile consortium agrees, then that can be written okay. that way. So all the funds that come in, if they're collected, right. can be received there if all the towns agree to it. Right. And so, so right now the funds come, that 3% comes into the town. That goes into a revenue line item, general fund. We then have line items that we pay, you know, the hourly fee for, you know, filming and the editing and that sort of thing. Um, but then the, the, any excess just goes into the general fund and is basically offsetting taxes. I don't, I don't, you know, just from what Chad's saying, it seems like the intent of the fund was to actually have a public education governmental channel. And over the years, since there was no actual organization to do that, we just kind of so, well, brought it so in. Will there be, I mean, now the revenue is going into the general fund. Will there be a point where there's a special reserve account or something for, for that? There's nothing at this point. Yeah. Uh, that just whatever balance is left, of course, you is used against the tax rate. It's part of our revenue that's counted in. So the income is ranges anywhere from like forty two thousand to I've seen it as high as fifty six thousand. Mm -hmm. I think this year it might be around fifty two thousand. 
it fluctuates. Mm -hmm. and it's based on but the per traffic. Yeah, so traffic exactly, and not. Um, it, it's only on cable access. So if you're a phone internet only, you're not levied a, a, a fee on your your uh, subscriber. Yeah, it's just for cable television. I'm I'm just trying to you know like keep the expenses and the revenues kind of clear, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't mm -hmm. go into the general fund so so much. Um, I don't know. That's important to me, and I and who owns the uh, equipment right. is also important to me. Um, so those are basically yeah. my concerns. And, and, and as I said, the hope is that if, if all goes according to what our goal is, is that the ownership of the equipment would be the citizens based through the station. Like it, it's a citizen station. Um, there, there are five named founders on the nonprofit, but because it's a nonprofit, we'd be hold, held accountable for government regulations of the nonprofit. We're not here to make money. But we do need to operate and in order to operate that ownership of equipment would be there. But citizens at any time, if somebody wants to come in and say, hey, um, my, my cousin is doing something, I would like to film it, we would loan out cameras if they've met the requirements for, <laughs> for training. Okay, well, okay, so if, um, if we have this, this station, mm -hmm. who, over, who will oversee it? Just, the I mean, board. Who really? There's a board. Just the board. Right. Just, the just like in any nonprofit, you have a non-for-profit board. Uh, they have to obey the rules of the the state secretary of state IRS rules. So. Uh, yes, but right. but it's really the town that is. Well, through cable franchise agreement, I mean, we're all, that's something I think that also sits with uh, yeah. the them, yeah. with the group. Um, they're they're going to be fulfilling a role right. for those member towns. So. And that that group um, is appointed by the select boards of those towns. So, right. like you mentioned, yeah. Lisbon. Uh, yeah, Lisbon, Arthur Booten sits on the board for us. Um, we have uh, John Colony from Sugar Hill. We have Eric Meth from Franconia. I'm the alternate for Littleton uh, in, in Eddie Moore's stead at this time. Um, and then Bethlehem, Monroe, and Carroll, we've been seeking their uh, involvement. Uh, we did have one gentleman, I believe his name was uh, Mr. Gothier, uh, his first name uh, eludes me, John Gothier maybe, uh, James Gothier, regardless, uh, from Carroll. He mm -hmm. came to a few meetings, uh, allowed us to vote on a few in, inconsequential things, meeting times and locations, but we did have quorum for those, and the signing of the agreement. And then once that agreement was signed, to engage the lawyer to begin negotiations. Which that actually from from here and uh, from those in town, it's the furthest we've gotten in the negotiation process in three and a half years. As we've looked to renegotiate, we've never got to that signed agreement. There, I think there's been two extensions right, at this point. And you're right, and those yeah. did roll over. I mean, ultimately, uh, I think Eddie Moore was critical in negotiating the original agreement, and he did it in a way that created pretty much a self-sufficient um, way to fund the or the uh, TV channel. Um, I think that kind of what happened, I don't know, was because of default. And there was actually no organization to give it to, since Channel 2 didn't it technically yeah. exist, that the town became the recipient of those funds and, you know, you has been basically keeping the excess and offsetting the But in the absence revenues. of a new agreement, the old agreement continues. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Through, uh, through the two cycles of, of extensions. Uh, extensions. Right. Yeah. And, and they continue, I mean... No, I think that... Uh, I haven't I haven't followed up on all of the detail I, of the I asked consortiums that. on that, but yeah, yeah. and she said that um, at any time, if they wanted to, Spectrum could issue a letter saying, um, "Pony up, or we're going to dissolve." But it wouldn't be in their interest to because they're already in, involved and invested. So it's easier for them administratively to just allow it to continue to roll over as is and not negotiate. Just yep, you're up for another year. But it, they are under the gun to push. They're yeah, higher ups. Right. They're pushing to go for it. So. And I, I think that um, Eddie Moore must have done this too. One of the things that was uh, noted to me from the attorney was um, their surprise at some of the terms that we got. For example, Littleton has a much lower density requirement, yeah. where you were, they're required to provide cable extensions down a road at a you know much less you know much fewer homes than a lot of the other towns. So it's a it's not a bad agreement right now right. to keep you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I was, I mean, there was a, in effect in New Hampshire, but it was a big deal in the state of Maine several years ago where, mm -hmm. you know, these cable companies would go into a town and 
Mm -hmm. Enter on an agreement, you know, cherry pick the dense areas and move on to the next town and never follow up on, on the rest of it. But I mean, I know just in the time I've been in Littleton, 44 years, but anyway, the, uh, you know, living on Man's Hill, oh, we'll never have cable on Man's Hill. Do you have it? Oh, yeah. Really? And then <laughs> living at Parker's Lake, we'll never have cable. Hmm. <laughs> So, yeah, so now, what yeah. are you, Things change. That's pretty neat. Yeah. What are you looking for from the voters this year? Well, um, what I'm looking for is the educated opinion on how that funds could best utilize the station. I don't know the appropriate answer for that. I mean, I could say, oh, well, let's give all to the station, but I don't know if that's the right answer. Um, it, let's let's offset with what we need in the emergency interim. Well, that's good for this year, but what about two years from now? So I guess bringing it up for a discussion and allowing you folks to decide how best to move forward. I think this is just the, the, the tip of the iceberg of what the station can do for the citizens. Okay, um, so, so in the past, mm -hmm. everything was after school, so we didn't have any rent. You have an office, yep. you pay rent. We now. do. Okay, so that is kind of new. So that yep. must be coming out of that. That, we actually, we cover rent. We have a handful of agreements. Um, the Littleton uh, Healthcare, uh, Littleton Regional Healthcare has signed into a year, a year contract that more than covers our rent. Um, they are a sponsor for us. They, they give us a line item. And we, we do have a, an estimated budget that's a couple of pages deeper in here. Um, but you can see, where, where we're working at right now, um, bringing in for our fee for service, um, and this is year to date. Um, it'll it'll expand a little bit through December. Um, fee for service, we brought in about thirty-eight thousand. Um, total income with everything all included is about forty thousand. Operations are at about thirty-three thousand, and then you have the expenditures down through the line. So. Um, we meet our minimums, and the reason that happens is because we don't cover by paying or buying anything. Um, everything that comes in goes to offset the operations. So we, we can't, we're, we're at a, a ceiling right now. If we want to expand any new opportunities, we can't. We don't have any room to grow. What is your, what is your franchise fee go from zero? This year to because we don't collect any of it. We don't. None of it is coming into the station but at you this will time. Next year, you that is the hope. Years. That is the hope is that the franchise fee, based on the discussion we have now with you folks, and then how it moves forward through the the rest of the budget season. Oh, it's the hope that the towns turn the franchise fee over to you guys. That is yes. Okay. Empl right. Employees. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the interesting with that is my. Company Flume Media is the caretaker of the requirements. So there are no employees saving the town the administrative costs of employees because I hired them and I employ the people that are needed. And so there's no health insurance, there's no cost for operations as far as um, insurance, um, the payroll taxes, or any payroll fees. All of that is covered through Flume Media and then I pay as needed to the employees. So I pay the payroll taxes, I pay the health care, health insurance, I pay the workers' comp. And where does Flume Media get their income? Well, we have contracts with outside agencies outside of the town. Um, we do broadcasting with NSN networks. We do a lot of live broadcasting. We do filming here for the town. Yeah. We do the coverage of events and local and regional stuff. So you're asking also potential equipment, right? Not for Flume Media, for the station. For the station. And are you under contract with the town? No. I think we just have, well we, we have, have, a, we have an like, agreement an agreement kind of like we do with attorneys where you know you get a you get a uh, hourly here's our hourly rates this year kind of thing so, yeah. are you subject to any auditing or just right now and and when you transition to a nonprofit you would be subject to the state requirements and reporting that yeah Grand Grand Royal Television would be subject to any and all reviews of any of their books that are required. And as part of that, the operations that are paid to Flume Media would be part of that review. Okay. So, so it's just the agreement, the franchise fees, nothing for equipment this year as a warrant article. Well, we we didn't talk about that. I mean, on the other on the final sheet of this is our our critical equipment list, and we can discuss where that money would go if we receive that that money. Um, 
So that's yeah. basically you're saying that you can get some of that critical equipment Absolutely. if that money is transferred. Yeah. Yes. Basically it, that's one of the first things that you would do. So correct. Just so I get a little perspective. So we're the committee is just are we deciding or, or just getting educated tonight on what's sort of in the works for Granite North TV and then I think we're just getting educated because um, right now, because there isn't a specific request. If they have a specific request, that would have to be in the form of a warrant article Correct. that we would have to then review. But, but they we can't. don't have it. We don't have that in front of us right now, so I don't know. And, and am I right in saying that you can't really do a warrant article until you're officially a five hundred one c three? That I'm not sure of. Uh, I know that in speaking with Andrew, right. that they have said that they would be a fiscal agent if we were to apply for grants. That the right. town would would speak on our behalf, but I don't know how that would work if we were to ask for a warrant article. Yeah. So, so. Uh, you can put a warrant article. Individuals can put a warrant article on the warrant as a petition warrant article. Mm -hmm. um, what I would do is check to make sure that when we pay it out, that they are filed with the IRS. And it's that either. could have to be that could be part of the warrant article language. Would that would be? be up to the petitioner if it's a petitioned warrant article to put on. If the town puts a warrant article on, it would be up to DRA if we can add that. All of our warrant articles are vetted through attorneys and DRA, which is the Department of Revenue. So we have until January something to have any petition warrant articles. Mm -hmm. So this. Has, this homework has to be done mm -hmm. one way or the other. Right. Um, so basically, what else? you're asking. Mm -hmm. No, I was just trying to okay. put it all. I, I get what's it. What's being it asked sense. is, to, in some fashion, allow Grant North Television to become either the direct or indirect recipient of the franchise fee. I, I think it's the most direct. Yeah. One way or the yeah, other. I think that's and, and, the, the and long and short of it is. But that's for, for starting in the future. Mm -hmm. So you're not looking for us to transfer anything to you right now? I don't know when they arrive, but no, not transfer okay. back funds or anything like that. Okay, no, no. so the, you want in the future that franchise fee to come to you? To the station. To the station, right, yeah. to the station. Okay. I would love it to come to me, but we, we need to okay. go to the station more. So that's what the warrant yeah. article would be all about, is beginning in 2019, that the franchise fees would not be mm -hmm. given to the town, it would be given to the station. Right. See. Okay, right. so I'm going to tell a little story here. So, <laughs> this is a school story, but I think it relates to this. And this is the reason why I have this, these red flags up. Um, so, when we were part of SU 35, one of the things that they wanted to do was buy equipment, testing kits, and everything else for special education. And it would be for you know hearing or anything. When we dissolved from SAU 35 and became our own SAU, um, well, back up a little bit. They had said that by doing it together, the consortium doing it together, we would have better chances of getting grants and chances of buying the equipment and chances of this. But then when we um, became our own SAU, none of that equipment was ours. Mm -hmm. And so that is my fear, is and you know, a consortium and it, we, it comes in to, I don't know, I, 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 this is above, above my pay grade to figure this <laughs> yeah. out, but this is the question I have. Who will own the equipment, especially if it's our money, and if some of these other towns aren't contributing, and it's on a Warren article, um, you know, oh, how does that mingle together? There, there's been a lot of education that I've learned. Um, part of it was um, writing up our dissolutions for our nonprofit. And part of that dissolution agreement that's in our state file papers is that if Granite North Television dissolves, that the equipment must go to a like source, be it a, under the nonprofit doing broadcasting or a school or educational community entity that's doing similar to what we are. So already in our, our chapter or in our, our bylaws. But your board your board makes that decision. They could they could give it to anybody they wanted to. 
we didn't have to come to the, the yeah I, I believe you're correct yeah. they 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 make the decision the board of directors of the entity and and was your was your entity have any depends on where it goes authority yeah. over the yeah. setting of the rate or depends the collection of it i mean like yes, the towns <laughs> that that don't collect anything at this at no. this time we do not but we are based on you know, scheduling we're trying to work closely with the profile consortium as part of our renegotiations to position the profile cable consortium and granite north television so that all all towns are, are contributing on a fair level based on the the needs and growth expectations of the station so right now some give zero some give three some give one the hope is is that we can um, approach the towns and the select board or not the select board the um, the uh, elected individuals that sit on the consortium yeah. to bring back to their select boards that this is what's moving forward they all they want three percent from all towns as part of it and, and that's the hope you know, I not, can't speak for the towns you're not planning on starting an airport we are not <laughs> doing an airport um, but I, I will say that through our um, boots to the ground efforts um, I, I do strongly believe that one of the best branding processes that the town can do is through the video and the social media that we provide. Um, we've got um, the syndication capabilities. We filmed Romeo and Juliet at the Opera House last year. It's one of our most viewed um, stage, um, videos on YouTube. And it comes up, people find it when they're searching Shakespeare, when they're searching plays, when they're searching Romeo and Juliet. Um, it's, it's almost at 10,000 views, which is not a lot in the scope of, you know, the YouTube society that's out there. But for our little station, that's a lot of views. Um, but we also, we can leverage the power of syndication. It's actually viewed in California, as well as Michigan. It might be Montana, with another M state on that side of it. Um, because we are partnered with a Telview, which is a syndication corporation that allows us to upload our videos and shows and other public access stations nationally can download it and syndicate it on their station. We'll show shows from other towns on our station and like and vice versa. Okay. So. so so whether it's zero percent, one percent, three percent, five percent, the 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 uh, subscriber does pay for that. Yes. It doesn't just appear on their bill. I mean their, their, their bill their bill would be less if we weren't charging the three percent. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for sure. It's just, That's right. Yes. It's, okay. So ultimately, it's passed on. So then the question, I guess, if you're going to do this, I mean, obviously, Littleton there again has the biggest chunk of money. If we're going to commit our mm -hmm. money to that, other towns are not going to commit any money because they aren't charging anything. You would think that everybody should be participating and contributing in some proportionate way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not looking to raise anybody's bill or whatever, right. but it, it, to be fair and equal, everybody should be three percent, or everybody should be four and a half, or everybody should be five. Correct. To make it all happen. Uh, there is a there's an interesting dynamic in that that pay to play type of scenario where some citizens would have access to the television station because they have a cable subscription, yeah. and therefore they're paying because it exists. But the citizen that doesn't pay also doesn't have access on the television station. So there's that dynamic. But as we see cord cutting and cable subscriptions wane mm -hmm. and, and moving more to a dynamic where it's online, we're looking to um, bol bolster our position now so that we can begin the process of growth so that we're not as beholden to those franchise fees and we can become autonomous from those through subscribers and online patronage or gift giving and donations because we're producing a quality product that everybody supports. Yeah. So anybody who is not on the cable system but who has internet can basically watch everything that you've done on YouTube anyway? They can watch on YouTube, yeah. So that they're not excluded from it. Mm -hmm. Rudy, do you have a pertinent question? <clears throat> yes. Uh, this is just for the people and also, you know, I hope uh, somebody looks to your video stuff like that. Believe it or not, this morning I talked with the cable, okay? You know me, you know, I'm always brown nose, everything that's going on in town. Let me tell you one thing. Your channel, which I admire what you're doing, your channel will be like HBO. You want HBO? You gotta pay for it. 
You want the movie channel, you gotta pay for it. Right now, the channel that you ask for, right now, and we don't even see them once in a while, it costs us the taxpayer real time, $6.21. You want to know things? I tell you what it is. That $6.21 is gonna go inside your bill if you want to watch your program, which is good, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, you do a good job, excellent job. But it's not only for free. The channel that you gonna get from cable to show to the people a little time, and also, like you said, we got seven towns, okay? All this is seven towns. All the residents of the seven towns, they gotta pay to watch your channel. Every month, that's what it's gonna cost. Right. You know, cool. it's not that for free. This is an HBO, this is a movie channel, this is a whatever you wanna call it. Yeah, Rudy, where you come up with the $60? Sixty dollars and twenty-one cents. Which is about with, five dollars and eight cents a which, month. Yeah, which is which is about sixty dollars. Yeah. Four sixty a month or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. About eighty dollars a year. That's which, three percent. Yeah. That's three percent of the gross revenue of Spectrum, based on the subscribers in the town of Littleton. So that that, that percentage, um, if we you were to check those numbers in Lisbon, it would probably be a lot less. A lot less because they have less subscribers. Little the eyes to one. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Uh, do I interesting gonna, to know you know, do that. I gonna say it's a big deal for the people? It's mm -hmm. nothing. Eighty dollars a year to watch your channel. I watch your channel. You right. know that. It's fantastic. What's interesting you know, is the, but the growth people of... People will pay for it. You guys have got to realize that the taxi pay, they pay for it. That's it. That's the main thing. The taxi pay, they pay for it. Right. That's it. Well, it, it's very similar to when we pay a tax on a gasoline. Yeah. We get new bridges. I, I, I mean, it's very similar. That's how it goes to it. And we get bridges that we all use because of the taxes that are laid on fuel taxes. It's, and it's actually not the taxpayers paying that. Yes, it's cable it's subscribers. The users. users yeah. Yeah. The, no, wait a minute. I don't subscribe to cable. So we don't I have you Hulu don't and cable. I have Netflix. You don't pay I'm for not it. paying for it. No, you, because you don't okay. have cable. That's what I'm saying. It's you not really the taxpayers, <laughs> it's the users of that cable that pay for it. But the taxpayer right. will, under some formats, or could under some formats, pay for it because they're not going to, if we give up the benefit of the money the town received that doesn't get spent that ends up going into the general fund effectively <laughs> reduces everybody's tax right. bill by a small amount but, yeah. but by something karen actually it would be about if it's fifty thousand it would be about six cents per thousand on your home uh value uh, not since it's not going into the not an addition fund, though right. because right now we currently pay we we pay out like an hourly rate to the station, so the difference probably would really be like two or three cents, I think, because we're are probably paying about half of that. Are we going to yeah. still pay an hourly rate out to the station? Though? That that would be a, an ongoing discussion that we yeah. haven't even brought up to, yeah. to to look at yet. Oh, he but. wants to be with us, so you could do it for free, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would love to, but there's, there's well, so I many think things. This, I have a sense of what you're hearing from everybody. Obviously, whatever we want to make sure we know what change we're Absolutely. making, if we're going to Absolutely. make a change. And to Diane's point in particular, we want to make sure we have some sense of longevity Certainly. and what may yeah. happen if if things didn't can I mean obviously with the way technology changes I mean yeah. go well, where we're at right now. No, 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 certainly. It, and things. it's it's difficult because the 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 wall that we're up against right now, um, we have a video server that's located at the high school currently. And the distributor that we're working with said that the parts in this are unavailable. Like if this if, if something major within the computer breaks, the station's dark. We can no longer broadcast. So it's a, like a critical red flag that if that $40,000 piece of equipment isn't replaced, the station goes away. We can do our YouTube thing, but we're not doing the service that we're here to provide, and that's that cable access and that public access and providing that streaming opportunity as a live broadcast of the, um, the graduation or sports games and so forth. Um, and then the other items that are on that critical replacement list are um, a, a couple of computers because there are none there. We're actually, we have a couple of computers that are running Windows XP. 
So, if, yeah, so just to give you, and Andrew saw him, he was like, whoa, you need to <laughs> shut that off or take it off the network or something. But that's where we're at when we talk Thank about you, the, the age of equipment. We're running XP on two machines that probably couldn't stream a video if they wanted to. Um, yeah, I thought that was eight, a eight gigs of RAM is like. <laughs> Are you trying to get a yeah. grant for that forty thousand dollars piece of equipment? Well, and we're we're looking at all those options. Things have moved quite fast for us this year. Um, we're really still getting our feet under us, um, but we have aspirations to go for that. Uh, um, Andrew, help me. Was it the, the USDA yeah, the community facilities community facilities grant is one that we're looking to to work with NCIC on? But again, there's there's only so many things that we can do at, at one time. So. Well, I think it would be exciting to have an up-and-coming television station here in Littleton, and I do see advantages to it, but it's all the devil in the details right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. You know, yeah. yeah, I'm kind of like a deer in the headlights with all this. Yeah, it's, it's taken me almost three years now since I took over for Bob in 2015, or 2016, rather, and it, it's eluded me into the point where I was like, Andrew, we, we need to really untie this. And I've talked to Dr. Nallis, and they're very supportive of the, the endeavor of becoming an autonomous entity that exists with everything listed in line item of, so everybody knows what is what. Because if you walked into the studio uh, a year ago, uh, at any given moment, you could look at the wall at the high school and say, that's the stations, that's the schools, that's the stations, that's the schools. And it was this tangled web that we've worked diligently to untangle. But these are the last devils in the detail that we really need to untie and, and sure up so that we have a future for the station. Any more questions? Uh, one last one. one quick one. So right now, the three percent we charge the cable system comes into the town. The town right. holds it. Yeah. When you video the budget committee, the selectmen, he comes out of that three percent mm -hmm. and pays them ten dollars an hour, whatever. Right. That's great. But if the town turns that three percent over to them and it's not coming to us, mm -hmm. and they're going to film the selectmen and the budget work. Now it's going to come out of our budget. I think that's... Because the 3% is gone. They yeah, I think that yeah. that's something that that's we a would discussion need to, to, be had. to actually establish a contract to say, you know, something like, you know, that amount is equivalent to this many hours or this many okay. shows or right. this level right. of service. And uh, the, the hope is not to charge twice. And the, the hope is to, to share up where those line items come in for Granite North so we can budget accordingly and provide the service that we've been doing. It'd be nice if you get all the towns on the same page, too. Right. That's, right. that's the other big one, is just getting quorum at the, po at the profile consortium, yeah. which is why I was kind of wrapping that gavel in Bethlehem last night, hoping to, to rally those troops. It's been difficult, too. Um, at first, you know, in working with Eddie, you know, and I was trying to pull the towns together. Eventually, we got some reps from each town, and an election happened right after that, after one meeting. Everybody just and that. yeah, then it was like starting all over. It's very difficult to get all the towns in the same room. But we Chad have, has been t spearheading it. and We've, really we've got a good group, on, so. a solid core that ha have met um, at least a dozen, a dozen and a half times consistently. Mm -hmm. But we're still reaching out. And, and work has been done at, in work session format of researching and, mm -hmm. and kind of figuring out and all of us working together. Uh, we meet, if anybody wants, it is an open meeting. Uh, it's the second Thursday of every month. We won't have one this week because it's the Christmas month, but January 10th is our next one. And you're more than welcome to. And the hope is that we'll have quorum and we can move forward with some of these decisions that do affect all the towns. So. Right after the select board meeting, right? right. <laughs> yeah, it's Thursday. So. Oh, it's Thursday. Yeah, Thursday's, not, the, yeah. not the December I, 10th. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to correct something because... The expenditures for the media services, and I, I'm just doing a quick look here, come out of the budget under um, before the police department. Sorry, <laughs> um, it's under advertising and regional association. So, um, if you're looking at it, it's the page where the cemeteries, the town insurance, mm -hmm. and other government is on, and it's under media services, and we call it channel two here. So, that's where the expenditures for 
the that's service. That's the same location that's been going for the last handful of years. Yep. The revenue yeah. comes in on the revenue side. <coughs> we look at the revenue sheet under... Um, Page 3 of 46. Other miscellaneous revenue. I think you're going to find it there. Cable franchise fee. I budgeted 45 in 2018. We've got half of it so far, which was 26640 I'm estimating we're going to get another so, twenty six. Yeah. Well, Chad, thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. Certainly. Yeah. And any further questions, info at granitenorth.tv. You can reach me directly. Okay. Or YouTube, <laughs> Facebook. Thank, thank you, you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, up we have the highway department manager, Billy Sargent, and uh, he's going to come up and present the public works and highway department budget. So I'm going to give you some handouts. How are we doing, Bill? Good. Steve. Good. Those go that way. Send those down that way. I don't know if everybody's got one or not. Sure. Am I yeah. short one? There we go. We got another. And I've got the fancy dancy staples on it. <laughs> so I'm going to read down through like I do all of the department budgets. Um, and again, because of some of the changes in the way that we had to revise the default budget, the proposed budget's in the center, okay? So under Public Works Administration, we have um, the Public Works Director. And we've adjusted the amount coming from the sewer. We used to have 15% and we're bumping that to 25% because our <coughs> Public Works Director is gonna be further involved with the sewer plant as time goes on. We know that we've got a change in health insurance under this budget. And if you go down through, there's been just a couple little tweaks here and there because of the adjustment with the sewer funds. So that 25% out to the sewer funds has adjusted some of this. The proposed is $100,044. It's 14,769 cent increase. Most of that increase is under the health insurance line. It's a 17% increase from 2018's budget. So I'm gonna go on to the public works department. And I need to include some of my notes. I'm sorry, they were, ended up disappearing here and all of this moving around items. Under permanent positions, we have the public works manager. And this is for 2018. Um, we've placed Billy into that position, go, trying to go back and look of going back to, if everyone remembers, we had a public works director that was an engineer. Um, we had Larry Jackson, which was the public works manager, and then we had um, a foreman, and we had employees underneath them. So we had two layers of um, management at the department at one time. And the department was down, and we've slowly added. In 2017, we added a full-time truck driver. We have in the proposed budget the full year for a truck driver that was approved in 2018's budget. Right now we have 5% going to the sewer reimbursement. When we get a chance to look at this one more time, that amount might be bumped up. The highway department is doing more and more with helping with the maintenance of the sewer lines, the uh, catch basins than they had years past. 
So public works director, we don't have currently. We have an so offer out there. there. Okay, but I mean that Close. It, yeah. that was Joe DeCama's position. That was Joe DeCama. It's di well, it's different now. I mean, so we've restructured it in a way. It's not the same position. Okay, but it's like the same ideas. designation. Well, the same title. title. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and before that was was George McNamara. That's correct. Okay, so, so we we intend to continue with that position. We just haven't found the right, or we haven't confirmed the right person yet. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And way before that, there was uh, Kathy Conway, which yes. was an engineer that had that position years ago. Yeah. You're talking 2006, I think, mm -hmm. five or six. And Henry Sherwood and mm -hmm. Bill Bedore and Perry Goodell. <laughs> hmm. That's as far back as I can go. Um, all, all good people. Good people. Under temporary positions, we do have a 3% increase. And over time, we've left that number the same. Health insurance, that is one that is, it depends on the different employees and what their needs are. Based on current staffing, this is what the number is. So uh, 148,856. It does include the uh, Warren Article truck driver for 2018. So I put in a number there for that. We also have disability, life insurance. Those are all wage related. <coughs> We have uh, Medicare retirement, that's all ra wage related. Under training expenses. Can we, can we just back up to the sure. administration? So, the, the big change in health insurance that it looks like prior to this, it must have been a buyout as opposed to. Yes, there was. And so, the person you're looking at or considering you're taking that is your yes. best guess. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. How much did your renewal go up this year? The insurance renewal. The insurance renewal went up. I tried to remember. So, that was pretty low. Yeah, it was really low. I'd have to look at yeah. one of your books. I didn't bring my book, <laughs> but I know it was very low. Yeah. Uh, I want to say it was seven percent. <laughs> yeah, I think. You, if you find it, it's payroll factors. Or so you're saying health factors. insurance? How much insurance? Yeah. 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 It would have been, I know it was under 10% and it was extremely low compared to the schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In private, I mean, ours went up 17% this year. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's just. I mean, it's based on our claims, too. And yes. we, we have, we have the, our insurance company has incentives to try to help people stay healthier. I don't know if that's working well, or not. This program. Yeah. The wellness yeah. program. Do you have one implemented in the mm -hmm. town? Yes. Yep. And we yes. have a designated, uh, what's that title? That designated wellness coordinator. We have four yeah. wellness coordinators. So. Some for a particular department. Yeah. Um, we, we have a wellness plan, we just don't have a plan to keep them younger. <laughs> we have smart yeah. shopper. Right. So when our employees yeah. um, have a procedure done, if they contact yeah. smart shopper, and they can get it cheaper somewhere else, they also get a little bit of a bonus. And I'll they, use myself as an example because anyone else would be disclosing something that shouldn't. <laughs> Maybe I should you do this. <laughs> I, I had to go to physical therapy. So when my doctor ordered it, I went on Smart Chopper and looked around, and because of where I went, it was going to be a savings of about $2,000 to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. And I got $150 because I went there and saved them 2000 mm -hmm. which, again, saves the town when right. it comes to renewals. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was just thinking, though, the schools went down this yeah. year, three yeah. and a quarter percent. Yeah. So they were was, anticipating yeah, something like a 7% increase, and, and they actually, and percent, yeah. actually ended up having a, a negative. So uh, their insurance over last year is going down by, I think, $114,000. Wow, so. that's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ours did that once. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. And I think, I think that's part of it because they had renegotiated some of their contracts. Yeah. So under uniforms, there's a slight bump in this, and that is the increase in cost and need for safety glasses, gloves, suspenders. 
there is a little bit of a bump in the uniforms themselves because you have your added staff member in here. Telephone communications the same. All of the numbers until you get to electricity are the same as what they are in the 2018 approved. There is 11% increase. As you can see, we're running higher than uh, we budgeted last year, but there's 11% increase that's been factored in. Uh, heating with propane, we've kept that number the same. And I see that we're a little bit over, but our rate did go up from last year. Pellets, we've reduced that based on historical to 5,000. So Water and sewer the same. So, Billy, on the, so the propane is used for what? Propane's used for supplemental when the, uh, when the pellet stove, or the pellet boilers, yeah. they're, they're, you're heating both fire and highway and when they're <coughs> maxing out, then the propane will. Okay, and obviously the stiff of winter as we had in January, we must have Absolutely. maxed out. Some yes, we night. did a lot. Yeah, it was very tough for that system to be able to uh, to run to par. And uh, uh, the Energy Conservation Committee is diligently working mm -hmm. to try to balance the system in order to improve the pellet system in order to avoid more natural gas yeah. uh, being consumed. And, and it's pretty, it gets really technical, but I think the underlying factors with the system is that it heats water up to a certain temperature. The highways system requires water to be at a certain temperature. Less than what? Less than. And the uh, um, fire, fire department yeah. requires, like the Modines require, I believe, is it higher than the, higher. the yeah. and, temperature and of the And the chief, boiler. fire chief, did kind of explain that. So supposedly mm. they've introduced a system now that when that happens, that the loop is cut off from the pellet boiler, the fire station does its own thing, and then once it gets to the point it needs to be at, then that loop gets is reopened again. or something yeah. to that effect. But, yeah. Yeah. But is general, though, is the pellet boiler working well? It has, matter of fact, we had the propane down for the first part of the, for the last part of the fall because of the project of the new uh, highway department generator being put in. Mm -hmm. We had to replace tanks, so we were running strictly off the pellets, and uh, during the cool fall, it was, it was perfect in there. Mm. It was running just great. Mm -hmm. So we continue on the next page. Under general supplies shop garage, we have an increase in cost for welding, welding rods, uh, refills. So there's a slight increase there. Um, continue down, the next increase is in office supplies. And that's because we have a copier maintenance agreement. And that is uh, uh, because we added in a new copier. We have reduced gas uh, and oil amounts, which include gas and diesel. So that has dropped down some. We have the same number of salt, sand, pavement maintenance. We have a slight increase in signs and posts. Um, there is a need to do some sign replacements. If you go further down under rentals and leases, that's reduced to 5,000. And machinery and equipment, we have a bump in that. We need to upgrade, update, and replace some old small tool and equipment. So the total public works department budget is $1,228,846. It's a 126,609 increase, 11.49%. Karen, to give it that number, please. Give it to that number, please. You want me to repeat it again? Yeah, one new uh, The amount of the Public Works Department is $1,228,846. Thank you. It's a hundred and twenty six thousand six oh nine increase, eleven point four nine percent. Some of that is made up of the new employee, some of that is made up of the health insurance change, um, adding and, and changing insurance plans. 
Would some of it be the contractual agreements for the CBA? Uh, no, the CBA is not in here. There's no, other than the part, temporary positions at this time, there's no increase for any of the union employees. Karen, quick question. The highway block grant. Where yes. Does that come in? That comes into the general fund okay. and is used to offset taxes. Okay. It's a lot smaller than what we end up spending yeah. in highway. Yeah. The highway block grant was about 186000 this mm -hmm. year. Okay. So that is just a... So you keep it separate? Or small, separate? yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. We continue on to the sewer. This is another big budget, and we thought it could be included in tonight's discussion. Um, we have in the proposed the adjustments within all of the different uh, personnel and highway department, public works department. That number is included in here, and that, that's increased from 2018's approved. The increase, and again, that didn't bring through. There's an increase in the contract with the professional services plant operation. And this is just an estimate of 3%. I usually don't get that number till the very end of December. Um, might be a little less, might be a little more. The next thing that's increased in here is the audit expenditures. Because most of our grants involve the sewer, we're going to have to have a special uh, expanded grant on the sewer. Yes. Single audit. Then you continue down to debt service. Excuse me. Yeah. Back on sewer, why are permanent positions so much higher than last year? We have increased the amount of workload that actually pertains. There is more workload that goes into processing everything that needs to be processed or okay. repairing so things. So did we add more people? No. 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 Well, you, you have increases? your public works that's the same, manager. That's the same figure that you moved over from Part of it, work. yes. Yeah. So it's an allocation to offset hours from the town staff to uh, take care of sewer issues. So if you look in the highway budget, you'll see those negative <coughs> numbers. It says from sewer budget. That's where these are. The, the increase okay. from 15 yeah. percent to 25. Okay, that's the 25 percent. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a, right. you, you know you can't yes. commingle yeah. funds, so okay. you have to account for them separately. And if you think about it, the tax collector spends almost as much time on collecting sewer payments or mm -hmm. user payments of the mm -hmm. sewer as what she would on property taxes. Every single one of those transactions, mm -hmm. you have to bill out mm -hmm. and take in. So uh, that's also included in here. So you continue down our debt services. I did remove that sub five loan, if you remember me talking about it in past meetings, that I found after doing the debt schedule that we had originally put in the proposed and the default. The principal payment is not, does not start until 2020. Uh, 20, and I need to fix that too. The interest does start okay. in here. Karen, a question with regards to the revised budget. So, I guess, so how does the, how do we have a default sewer user fee amount? A default sewer user fee amount. Uh, the 732,932. How? Up, way up on the top. How does okay. that figure? So, how this comes, so. Oh. That doesn't look right either. The sewer user fee, how you get to that number is you take the expend expenditures. This yeah. is one yeah. that's called the revenue yeah. neutral. Right. Yeah. yeah. You take that minus all of these other revenues that we're getting in, yeah. and that's how you get to the 732,932. I guess, how do we have a default budget on? Because you have to, with a revenue neutral uh, budget or um, fund, yeah. you have to have whatever your expenditures are is how you build your and revenues. And the same rule, like for the budget that just changed. Parking meters? Default. 
Mm -hmm. um, it applies here. Is that it, what you mean? How do you get that? No, number? no, but the yeah. sewer, I mean, yeah. regardless, of what, regardless of which budget were to pass or mm -hmm. not pass, I mean, isn't the sewer rates going to be what the sewer rates are? The sewer rates would be based on this bottom number. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the proposed number, the proposed number is 52509 more than what last year's number is. And then there's a difference between um, the 60000 and that one doesn't look right either. Uh, the 860,932 yeah. and the 896,991. Yeah. So depending on which budget passes at town meeting right. depends on how so we bill out. You could pass a default budget and then basically if we just like the statute lays out how we have to create the default budget that's what we would have to go by. So we do the same thing without, even though I even though I thought that the cost of the I thought that the cost of the sewer process, if you would, was all borne by the users. It is. It is. It is. So, so this whole expenditure. So for example, let's say you pass, let's say the default budget passed and it's that $50,000. So there would be basically <coughs> like some of the maintenance and things like that might not happen. We would have to do just like we would with any other budget and try to find where the savings would come from. I guess I'm having a hard time getting my head around. I mean, I can yeah. understand it, highway, fire, police, or whatever, but I guess in this here where it's basically it paid is for it is, by right, the people yeah. who turn on the faucet and flush the toilet. I mean, mm -hmm. It's just like the parking meter, just by, like the special detail. Anything that does not have a tax appropriation for it, mm -hmm has to have a revenue neutral budget right yeah. I, just, so, I just thought that we would collect less basically right. yeah okay yep it might cost you more in the long run but <laughs> as the pipes break <laughs> <laughs> so the next page yeah. that i gave you was so kind of an right. overview yeah. right, right. I've, yeah. I've taken yeah. off the original default that i had on I here and <laughs> i just want to go down to the total budget which is line 34 and the 2018 approved budget, which includes anything that had to be factored in that were Warren articles, is 9,151,949. The proposed budget is $9,579,996.32. Uh, There's a difference of 428000 47 dollars and it's 4.68 percent i do want to note that some of that is debt service some of it is broke over the enterprise funds as well it's not just the general fund the revised budget default budget is nine million two nine fifty two five sixty four it's a one point five four percent increase it's 140,615. So I went over those items. The last thing, and this will be updated, is the revenues. And the revenues, and I only have the default in here at this time. Um, the revenues that impact taxes is 2,375,000. This does not include any Warren article that has offsetting revenues. This is just revenues that, in, that affect the tax rate. Um, if you look at the MS 434, the final number that impacted the tax rate from these budgets was 2017815 Next week, I'd like to have a whole complete package for you yeah. showing everything because I don't know if there's any other uh, departments that you wanted to speak to, if you spoke to most of them. I think we've spoke to most of them. Yeah. Um, so I, I went through all of the um, budgets and basically said okay we've seen this one we've seen this one we've seen this one so we've seen most of them mm -hmm. um that we really need to talk to are there any questions karen do you have the warren articles as they exist today um i 
I have an idea of a few of them, yeah. and we did bring the spreadsheet. That um, yeah, they're right. So the select board is having a work session, I believe, on Thursday, yes. and they're going to review. And some of them might not make it to, you know, out of there. So yeah. we'll see. Before we move to that, so Bill, anything you'd like to say with regards to highway development, the uh, accomplishments, challenges over the last year, and what we're looking yeah. for in well, the future? Yeah, the challenges uh, this year were uh, jumping in midstream with the unfortunate loss of uh, Joe um, and the fortunate. Uh, business venture that he's uh, gone on to, uh, we, uh, we had a lot of projects that were already in the works and every one of them got accomplished. Uh, the team pulled together and uh, I think we're looking forward to next year to start out fresh and uh, accomplish the, the same goals and more. Yeah. It's done well. I mean, I know I the guys have done it, they, a lot of adversity uh, through through the year. We had some people out sick and mm -hmm. um, reduced staff. Reduced at times. staff. We had a, a very reduced staff through the uh, through the summer. Foster Hill Road uh, got done, and that is beautiful. If any of you guys mm -hmm. uh, have mm -hmm. been out that way, uh, that came out really well. And we got a little bit. Of, shim paving done around town, which is being challenged by our snow plows, <laughs> but uh, it has helped in some certain areas. Green Street. Green. And Green Street, yes. Green mm -hmm. Street parking uh, Looks great. was all done. Has the, uh, the new sidewalk plow been put out? Or is there an update on that? Yes. Uh, what we were lacking was the certificate of origin, Jim. Okay. Uh, and it was, it was Half, it was my fault and uh, Chadwick Bay Ross. When they got the final check uh, from the town, they should have sent the certificate of origin and they didn't. And actually my assumption was that it was all taken care of on when Joe was here. Sure, sure. Um, that has been given to Judy this week mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to probably, I'm not really looking for a lot of snow right now. <laughs> but the salt budget and the overtime budget is yeah. really, Oh, it just really taken hard, but um, it'll be on. It'll be on the road next week. Oh, so was it? Absolutely. It was a lack of a registration. That's all. Yeah. 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 She was entering it in as I was walking out today. So. Yeah. yeah. It's all insured. It's been insured. Yeah. 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 And we. It, it is quite an aggressive machine, and there will be some learning curves with it. Also, it's a lot different than a John Deere tractor, mm -hmm. and you know, I myself would like to see it really worked during good heavy storms and then also after some of the ground is frozen up. Uh, the si some of the sidewalks in town are a little brittle and I think that thing might uh, be a little aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> the last one lasted, what, 50 years? or? Yeah, well, it was still here when I started in 98 and it was in reserve and we finally pulled it out of reserve, got rid of it, took the engine out of the old Bombardier and put it in the sewer pump station on Brickyard Road, <laughs> which has since been replaced with a natural gas backup generator. But yeah, well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Absolutely. We have a couple worn articles. Okay, would you like okay. to go over those? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, what I have is. Uh, Mike, how are you? Good, you. Good. <laughs> you remember each other? Yeah, 40, yeah, 40, yeah 40, I guess so. Right? There's old coach right here. Right? <laughs> you guys old teammates from ice yeah. hockey? Mike and I, yeah, we oh, grew yeah. up on the same street right up by Remick Park. And Steve was a mm -hmm. hockey coach. Yeah. So, yes. um, we have stories to tell. Which we're going to save for a later date. You're not recorded. Not recorded. <laughs> Oh, I don't need, Bill, I don't need to be rude. I've got to scoot out early. Okay, sure, no problem. Child care. 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 Is there one more down there somewhere? Uh, uh, I'll check out. I'll share. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, thanks. Three. 
this is just a small narrative of our maintenance and our uh, replacement schedule that we somewhat used to live by. Just to let you know, it was a 2.9% increase on health insurance. And I knew I had it in there. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Better than the seven that you were saying. Yeah. I would take the seven. <laughs> first sheet I gave out right here is all of the inventory of equipment that we have rolling stock and the uh, brand model the year of it our mileage the usage of it and our target dates of replacement uh, some of the equipment here uh, has been on our list of uh, replacement in the past, but uh, due to uh, you know other budget budgetary constraints that we've uh, kind of put it off. This year, I sat down with the guys at the shop, and we kind of were wondering what we really needed to replace and what we needed to do to go forward to stay productive. The first item that came to mind was the replacement of the 2002 Elgin sweeper that we have. Um, there's not a, a lot of mileage on it. Uh, the hours on the, uh, on the, on the uh, truck engine, this, this machine has two engines. It has the, the drive engine for the for the truck part of it, and then it has the hopper and what we call the pony motor that uh, supplies power to the vacuum system. We're looking to go ahead and uh, replace that. It's a 2002. It's life a life expect expectancy of a heavy used machine like that is about 10 years. So we're shooting six years past its life expectancy. and. The maintenance of it and the replacement of motors, the rebuild of motors, the fabrication of parts and pieces from our local fabricators and from our uh, Elgin dealer to replace parts that need to that wear out. It's a sweeper. It's a self-destructive machine, and what we've what we thought at this point in time in order to get what we can out of that machine, which is only what you saw is 12. They're looking to give us between 12 and 12.5 12 for it. And that's, that's, that's them thinking that it's in, a, it's in pretty good shape, but that's not a lot of money for mm -hmm. the machine. And the cost to replace it? The cost to replace it is going to be between two hundred and fifty-five thousand and two hundred and eighty thousand. 
the original machine that we have now, uh, in 2002, we spent $159,855 on. That's how much they've gone up in 16 years, which uh, I've gotten quotes from our Elgin dealer that we dealt with, uh, with from our original machine, and I've called um, Viking Survey for Johnston, which are the two major hitters of the sweepers. It's a, it's a very important machine. This narrative here explains what we use, what we use it for. Other than just sweeping, it's used for vacuum excavation. It's used for our catch basin cleaning. In this narrative, I've also explained that I got prices from Avery Sweeping down in North Woodstock. We have approximately 54 miles of road. David Avery came up and met with me and we went over things. And for him to come up here is about $20,000 for him to do the, do the town. Um, he, had, he currently has 13 other communities, including the city of Concord. So that means we'd be put on a pecking list of when roads were going to get swept in town. Um, his catch basin, that catch basin cleaning, he could do also, but that's at $175 an hour. We have over 400 catch basins in town. This takes usually a good three weeks without any interruptions. They would probably work 10 hour days. That's going to be about $36,000 for them to come up and, and uh, do our catch basins. And we would have to supply trucks and manpower for help. Yeah. I don't know if with them, but we have on over the years farmed out, if you would, some of that business well? Uh, not since we bought the Elgin, not since 2002. Mm -hmm. We've had Vactor trucks in town to do our sewer line cleaning. This, this machine doesn't do any sewer line. That, uh, that is uh, Hardigan and EPS that's come up and does it. They're more specialized, the trucks that they use, those factor trucks. And uh, matter of fact, Avery just bought one, so we've got, uh, we've got access to, to uh, one closer than Hardigan. Hardigan sold out, and they're very difficult to be able to pin down for some of our sewer line cleaning. And I went with EPS this year, which is out of the southern part of the state, they were good, they came up here. Either way, they're expensive. They, they're just doing sewer line cleaning. Steve is running 1200 to $1,300 a day. And what is sewer line cleaning? What they do, what we do is we, as the department and the sewer treatment department, decide what lines that we need to clean and what lines need to be cleaned and maintained and obviously like the meadow, our sewer pump stations like the current pump station down on the meadow, the pump station on Brick Garrett all need to be cleaned at least once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. And you go to the manholes, you pop the manholes out, you run out 300 feet and you just keep cleaning, cleaning out. The sewer, bring it back, they vacuum it up, and then they bring it down to the treatment plant, and then they deposit it into our system, and hmm. then... Flushing or vacuuming? Flushing, or yeah, or, yeah. Or it, it bring, yeah, they, they pull everything back to the manhole, and then it gets vacuumed up okay. into their truck. You may have read about some of it recently on the front page of the Caledonia, with, <laughs> with my name in it, being sued. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, you know, fats, oils, and greases is a problem, and then there's other oh, yeah. interesting things that end up in there, sand, and, you know, yeah. lots of so different it, it, things. So. It accumulates yeah. debris, if you were yeah. over time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we did Brickyard Road, Steve, and we had EPS up here for two days, and we were mm -hmm. planning on having them do Brickyard Road and part of Meadow. And they spent the whole entire two days on Brickyard Road pulling grit back mm -hmm. for who knows unknown reasons. Obviously, we got to get up there at some point on camera the line to make sure that mm -hmm. everything's done. It's preventive maintenance. And actually, I think, I believe, if I'm not wrong, is we are required to do EPA. maintenance from the EPA. Yeah, mm -hmm. required by the EPA to have a maintenance program in, in line to to do that uh, line maintenance. 
Yeah. But the fact our sweeper won't do it. Our, our sweeper will do our catch basins. And uh, that, one of that those pieces of equipment that does it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's minimum five hundred thousand oh, dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's for sewer. Yeah. David and I think said that, he just spent five hundred and eighty yeah. five hundred and eighty thousand on his new the back. back yeah. You hear me? Uh, question: um, Any sense for there's a, about sixty six hundred hours? Any sense for whether half of it's spent on sewer, half of it's spent on street sweeping? Or 20%. None of it's spent on sewer. None of this is on sewer. Yeah. So our truck does not do sewer. Okay. I so think I I so got in. I got in. We got into what you this. Do? We what got you into the it? sewer part of it. Um, for I don't know what reason, but uh, okay. Because we love This it. is only for sweeping, <laughs> uh, yeah. vacuum excavation, and okay. catch basin cleaning. So the replacement is just strictly for for those. Absolutely. Okay. This would, this, this vehicle will mirror what we've got. I'm not going for any more bells and whistles. Matter of fact, we're going to probably take one side of it off, which will save us money, rather than have it being able to be either right or left driven or right and left brooms. We're just going to eliminate one side because 90% of the time you're sweeping on the on the right hand side, so that causes. So I, it looks like it's about 17 years old. Yeah. Um, and we, we purchased it new, I'm guessing? Yes. yes. Okay, so it's not a second hand. Um, so that's yeah. about 400 hours a year, 10 weeks of sweeping. Is that sound then reused? Sweeping, catch basin cleaning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're looking to finance it for five years. Rough estimate of the payments, about 51000 a year. Um, I do know that it had its engine rebuilt and some other parts rebuilt, which was about $35,000 about four years ago. Yeah, we had to put a new box engine in the back for that John Deere engine, that pony motor, and the stern, the, uh, the engine for the stern chassis we had to have rebuilt. The term sewer jet, that's a separate piece of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, a sewer yep. jet. We do have a sewer jet, which I guess we're co owned with the. Actually, we own it. Right. Yeah. We don't call anything out. We got a TV, a recent TV. Yeah, but past two I'm, years. I'm putting you on the spot, though. Right? That's fine. Um, so, do we do parking lots at all? Do we, do we yes, we absolutely. Do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And part of our. Just a town Yeah, bit part of it, you know, of course, in the springtime, it. The phone, the phone starts ringing right at April. When are you going to be sweeping my road? And it, it's a battle of who calls first and, you know, who, who bakes the best chocolate chip cookies. Sure. <laughs> but, you know, that, that machine gets starting to be Take used notes. immediately in the springtime yeah. in town. Mm -hmm. And then out of town, we do have a sweeper for the backhoe that we can go out and start getting the heavier sand because our out-of-town roads are the majority of them are all sanded during the winter. Sure. And uh, so we start immediately using it then. Once we get spring sweeping done, and then it kind of goes into this idle mode, and then we are doing sweeping up after storms, where try to go on a bi weekly uh, basis of sweeping Main Street, of Main Street, Meadow Street, West Main Street, Cottage Street, Union Street every two weeks. And that's why. It stays as clean as it does. I ran the sweeper for a number of years, and it, it's funny once you see the street starting to get dirty. It's like a lot of people don't notice it, but I was I'm like, wow, boy, I just swept that last week. Boy, this is getting grubby. You know, it's all the curb trash it starts to to accumulate, and uh, and it does. It makes Main Street look good. And then so you do that through the through the summer on a regular basis and as needed. And we've used it uh, when we were doing catch basins down through Union Street about four or five years ago. What we what we do then sometimes when we're in a real predicament and it's so brittle where those manholes are falling apart, what we'll do is use the back end of it again as like we would use the uh, use it for the catch basins. What we'll use is we vacuum excavate the top of those manholes so a lot of the stuff doesn't drop down into the inverts. It's it. It'll, you know, it'll pick up, because you want to make sure your shoes are tied. 
You know, when you're working around this thing, it'll pick up a brick like like a feather. And uh, so what you do is you know you pop your manhole up, take your manhole cover, you frame off, and then you you know you you have it all jackhammered out, and you take out what you can with shovels, and then you just start taking the back end of this thing and just vacuum excavating everything down to where it's a little bit more solid to work, and then you just keep going yeah. down with it. We used it. We used one from. EPS came up when Cumberland Farms was coming down into the meadow. There was a stipulation that in their work agreement that they needed to find the pressure line, the sewer pressure line that goes along that between the cemetery and Cumberland Farms and then scoots out behind Shaw's. They were required by contract to find that line. Well, that's a sewer pressure line. And I don't know about you, and even the best operator digging down and digging down and not really knowing exactly where that sewer line is. It's kind of kind of sketchy. So we EPS they had hired EPS to come up, and then they vacuum excavated down four feet, found where the line is. And they had to find it in three different areas, and they used that type of excavation. Same thing that we do, but it was a little bit more involved than what we do. Now there's another piece of equipment that I know you've talked to me about that you want to replace. Uh, that is one of our Ford uh, 550s. That, uh, that truck has been a mainline truck and it has 107,000 miles on it. It's being used as a spare right now. And I've got, in, I've got budget quotes from North Country Ford and from HP Fairfield to uh, outfit the truck. We've also talked in the shop of rather than farming out the entire truck to either Fairfield or Viking Survey, is doing the work in, in our shop ourselves. Uh, they gave us a quote for all of the equipment we would need. And really, I mean, for them to do it and us to do it, I hate very close. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like we might as well just let them do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have more priority things to deal with with the road. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think the difference was like. But we were, but we put it out there. We were like, hey, let's try to save some money do and the do research. and oh. do the work ourselves. And we have the capability to do it ourselves. There's no doubt about that. Um, mm -hmm. so the, the trucks. I the, yeah. The, Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just telling Karen. So. Oh, okay. Well, we, um, I, I gave away my narrative on that one. If I could yeah. buy yours. Um, we're, we're currently looking to replace truck for a Ford 550 utility truck. It does have high mileage. Our typical vehicle and equipment schedule we used to run by were our small trucks we used to do seven years. And our bigger trucks like our our big dump trucks uh, we used to do every 10 and then our equipment was done as needed um, such as it, what condition it was getting in accruing maintenance costs and etc um, then I'll have I'll need to read this a little bit I didn't quite practice it but one thing I want you to keep in mind is former boss always told me is that all of our equipment and trucks they're born in the salt and they die in the salt we all know how harsh our New England weathers are up the weather is up here and we're right in the middle of it we're in the front lines of putting the salt down cleaning it up and the, the equipment and the trucks literally bathe in this environment for four to five months out of the year uh, and this year it'll be six months so uh, <laughs> we have all the employees no, it's very, it's very. <laughs> yeah uh, all the employees are assigned a specific vehicle they take care of them, they wash them, they do the light maintenance of them. We have a maintenance uh, program where the oil is changed, they're greased, they're, they're very well taken care of, but they're, they're used um, extensively. And when we do our inspections, we do our own inspections, and I have two state certified inspectors on my crew that go through every truck from stem to stern. Uh, not only is the winter rough on this equipment, is we have a very aggressive uh, summer construction schedule. 
that has to be met. Uh, the 550s and the equipment take the bulk of the work. Dump trucks mainly used to transport our materials. The backhoe graders, excavators, loaders, small tractors are all being used on a constant basis, which leads to a lot of wear and tear and breakdown of the fleet. Our equipment is used more than a construction company at times because some companies will shut down for the winter and our equipment stays on the road 12 months out of the year. I said the biggest nemesis is the salt. The rust corrosion never ends. Um, when it starts getting into the electrical systems, it'll, it'll plague you. And what it does is it starts messing with all the computers and the trucks and it will, you know, it'll give you a mechanic a diagnosis nightmare. Um, but we're being sensitive to the budget and hopefully understanding that some years our replacements just can't happen. Um, I know that keeping trucks longer than what our schedule has been in the past with the seven years for the small trucks, 10 years for the bigger trucks, it's driven our maintenance and repair budget through the roof. Um, an example was a few years back we wanted to get rid of one of our 550s that we knew was getting tired. And for one reason or another, it, it wasn't accepted as part of a warrant article. And later on the next year, we lost the engine and had to put $10,000 into a truck that we were ready to get rid of. And we want to try to avoid that. Now we've got a truck, a Ford 550 truck for the 10,000, it's a 2002. And it's got a $10,000 engine in it, but it's literally rusting right away. And they had a, last year, the guy that was running it, Steve Clooney here, was, couldn't figure out where the water was coming inside the truck. And then finally, our mechanic had pulled the windshield out and everything on top of the, along the top part of the windshield was completely rusted away. We had to pull the windshield out and he had to do body work all along the front portion of the top of the cab in order to stop the water from coming in and going down in behind the dash and you know, it was like, okay. But it has a new $10,000 engine in it. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so how much was that article? Do you recall what the article, the article was to how much to purchase this vehicle that was turned down? Uh, I'm going to, Mel, I'm going to guess four years ago where we were still looking at outfitting a Ford 550 for 80 Seventy to eighty thousand dollars, probably back then. And so we ended up having buy another one. Well, no, it's still it's still on it's still running. We still have it. With, with the new engine. engine. Yeah, that one, and it will replace. Yeah, with a new engine, we're not going to replace that one yet. We'll just keep it running That's until. Right. And a lot of these trucks, we don't. I don't have a trade-in value here with you because both these trucks that are duded get out of there, the frames have been broke, and uh, the front ends of these trucks take it take it extremely hard. Sure. And once the frames broke, and they get welded, you can't trade them in, you might correct you that. So, so we how really much, oh, how well, much is the new one? The new one, um, with just budgetary numbers to, to put there to start working on a Warren article, is outfit is, is 81,000. That's being cons very conservative. And we're using time. the sander. And Do you have a question? Right, we're going to use our, our own sander. and We won't have to put a new sander and plow on it. We'll use our existing. Wow, our good time has come to an end almost here. Because um, they're having a meeting afterwards. Oh, that's my next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what did you, did you want to add anything? Um, just the you know, last quick question. Bill, last year Joe had made a proposal for a 10 wheeler dump truck that didn't pass. It did not pass. Did not pass, correct. Okay, uh, is, is that a, a, um, a theory or an approach that you, you would buy into as far as wanting to get one of those trucks to see if that would improve our route performance? I would to? entertain that. I didn't think at, at this point I want to look at replacing the 
as we work forward, and I'll work with the public works director um, with, is looking forward to replace the equipment that we have now before we start looking to improve. Like some of our internationals, uh, you know, I know we'll be going for one of those next, well, I'm fairly sure we'll be going for one of those next year. We'll probably entertain that 10-wheeler idea next year. But the 10-wheeler last year would have replaced one of the internationals? No, we're not going for one of those. No, but last yeah, year. Last year, yes. Uh, yes. yes. It would have. Yes, it would have. And I think they've Absolutely. probably rebuilt it, and fixed. I know there was a big spring job last year. And, you know. I just got done putting a whole new front end, king, uh, king pins all the way up through front springs and everything on truck 51, which is... Yeah. Okay, Mary, but that yeah. ten wheel concept is still on the horizon. Absolutely. Yeah. It hey, makes a lot of sense. Everyone. Um, we will have another couple of meetings. Um, we there's so much to cover at each meeting. Um, I probably will send out an email with some of the information I was going to share tonight. Um, but Karen, we have war articles to go over. Um, and you said that the select board was basically uh, having a work session tomorrow night? It was uh, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday night. So next Tuesday. Thursday afternoon. Yeah. Thursday afternoon. So Tuesday, next Tuesday we should be able to dig into the warrant articles. We basically under new, the new policy for um, the budget committee that the select board passed earlier, we're supposed to have all this done by the 15th, and I don't think we're going to make it. Um, but we're trying. But we're certainly trying. Um, so anyways, um, right where we're at right now, just to recap, um, is for the town, I believe we're new spending, uh, the new proposed budget over the last year's approved budget is $428,000. Um, then we also have the warrant articles and on top of that we also have uh, negotiated two negotiated agreements with the town yeah. with the town yeah. on the school side um, their budget is up 202,000 with the possible of 100 po possibility of decreasing that by 114,000 for the insurance I don't know what they're if they're going to roll all that back to us or they're going to insert other things in there they also have a bus negotiation, they have a teacher negotiation, they have site acquisition, and they have architectural and engineering. So you can see we have some work to, to be done. Um, they are assuming that it's going to be $388,000 for um, architectural renderings for the school, so they're probably going to be coming forward with a warrant article for that. And then for land acquisition, I don't know. It's a big question still on that. So we have all of those things to think of. The last piece that I'm going to really run through quickly is if you look at your bond, um, your debt service, the, so for the next five years, if we were to take a look at that, the next five years, it's going to go from 1232000 to in 2025 to 320,000, depending on what we do, you know. So that's a decrease of 912,000. On the school side, um, they have 300,000 coming off in uh, 2023. So putting all that together, I'm hoping that we can kind of really take a look at some of our bigger projects and work with the select board, with, or work with the school board, and kind of pigeonhole some of these projects in there before they're claimed by something else. So, um, so go home, take a look at all of this, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Now, we don't have a meeting right now set up with the school budget committee. We do. We talked to Steve about that. So, not this Thursday, but the following two Thursdays, we will most likely have a meeting with them. Okay. So so put that on your calendar so nothing as well. This Thursday but the next two. Okay. Yes. So thank you everyone. And the next six uh, Tuesdays for budget.